Hi, and welcome to this Google Classroom tutorial on the Classwork tab. What you see in front of you is a classroom of mine from last year, and I'd like to take you on a tour with all of the functions that you're able to get yourself organized with. First, you'll see that there are topics created as you work through the classwork tab of my Google Classroom. The topics are essentially the units that I work through in my American Literature course. And within a topic are all the supporting individual documents that are assigned throughout the unit. Now, one thing that you may notice is that the last topic of transcendentalism is posted mostly in June. So this was the last unit we worked on in the year. It's important in the classwork tab that you keep whatever you're working at, working on at the very top so that there's no need for you or your students to scroll to find the course materials. So the materials at the very bottom of my classwork tab are where we began the school year in September and the very top is where we ended the school year in June. Now, what you can also notice is that I, to the best of my ability, try to use a numbering system. This helps navigate students to the right document quickly. So I number my units, I number the supporting documents within the unit, and I also use these numbers in my Aspen gradebook so that if a student is missing an assignment, then they are able to quickly identify the classroom thread where that assignment lives. Due to the nature of a course, not every assignment in Google Classroom gets graded, so it's helpful for students in the Aspen gradebook to know which document I'm referring to, and the use of these numbers helps tremendously with that. Now, in the Classwork tab, you'll see that there are different icons. There's a materials icon, an assignment icon, a questions icon, and these just designate the, very, the different kinds of posts that you can create within a classwork tab. So you can frame out your topic. You can reuse a post from an older classroom and then customize it to fit for this year. You can create a material, which is like a digital handout. It doesn't create a ticker. You can ask a question. You can create a quiz assignment. Though, side note, I don't usually use this function as I prefer to open Google Forms and create a quiz within Google Forms and then add it as an assignment, but that's just my personal preference. Um, and then also just an assignment. You'll notice here on the left side is hyperlinked navigation menu. So if I wanted to revisit the Great Gatsby unit, which was way back in September and October, I can click that topic and I'm brought back to the last assignment we worked on, prepping for the lit assessment. And again, I can work backwards throughout the doc, throughout the unit. I go back to all topics here. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at an assignment. This was, as you can see, posted on September 10th. And um, within the assignment description, I let students know exactly how much the assignment will be worth. And if I were to edit this assignment, you can see that it's marked as ungraded. Again, this is my own personal preference. I choose not to use the Google Classroom gradebook because I do use Aspen's gradebook and I find it to be a bit much to add a grade on directly on the document, directly into Google, I mean, sorry, directly into Aspen's gradebook, it, that to add 
the same grade in one more place just doesn't seem necessary. So I let my students know that yes, everything's gonna be marked as ungraded, but you will clearly see how much it will be graded out of and on your document, you'll receive the grade. As um, a side note to that, students will eventually archive the class. And so any grade that's provided here and any feedback provided um, on an assignment will eventually be lost. So anything like this will never be looked at again, but they may return to the actual document inside their Google Drive and they'll be able to see the feedback as well as the grade that was put directly onto the document. So the last thing I'll leave you with is the importance of creating assignments with as much information as possible. And so let me go over here to um, a professional development course Mr. Greg Schwambach and I are teaching. And um, if you were to take a look at an assignment, you will see, again, using a, a similar numbering system, you'll see the ticker, right? How many people have turned it in? How many people haven't? How many people have been graded? And again, I also encourage you to always ask your students to click view assignment for the full details. You'll see in the instructions here that it does have a due date. And in this case, because I'm not using Aspen's gradebook to communicate completion status, I am using just one point. So one point you did it um, correctly or zero you didn't. And so when you're framing out an assignment, it's important to have a nice succinct title and then to use that same title in your Aspen gradebook. Then here under instructions, you can be a little bit wordy You'll add your supporting documents. You'll decide who will receive that assignment, how much it's worth, or is it going to be designated as ungraded the way an earlier assignment of mine was? When is it due? In which topic will it fall under? Now, as the teacher, if I select view all, and for students, they have a to-do list. You'll be able to have a bird's eye view of all the assignments and completion status. Um, and you can navigate to different courses here. So the more information you provide in a classroom, that the more helpful it will be for your students to navigate your expectations. So I hope you found this overview of the Classwork tab helpful, and I hope it helps you organize your own assignments as you work through the year. Thanks for watching.